Hey everybody, it's Lissa. Welcome back to my reading channel. Thank you guys so, so much for being here today, and I'm very excited for this video. This is a video that I have had in my idea book for quite a while now, like probably like a year now, and I've just never filmed it because I knew it would take a lot of time for me to film it. But I've got all of my books lined up here and I am ready to film this video. Uh, this video may be long. Some of you guys like long videos, so if you do, grab your popcorn and just chill out with me while I recommend some books for you. In today's video, I am going to be recommending books based off of certain emotions that I personally felt while reading them. Quick disclaimer that everybody feels differently with each book they read. One person may experience happiness during a book while another person may experience sadness. It all depends on how each person and takes the book so just keep in mind that these are the motions that I felt while reading these books and you may feel completely different and that's the great thing about art is everybody takes art in different ways and it's always fun to discuss in the comments like how we felt about certain books and how everybody just feels different so just want to say that quick disclaimer um, these are the books that I would recommend that I liked or haven't liked and that put off certain emotions while I was reading them. Keep in mind, I do read pretty often. I mean, not as much as a lot of booktubers on here, but some of these books I have not read in years. So I'm gonna try my best to remember what they are about to kind of describe them to you, but I have a lot of books. So I'm gonna try to go through them as fast as I can. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first category, I have five different categories. I have happy books, sad books, books that made me feel angry or scared, whether it be like a horror book or just like characters that made me angry. Then I have books that made me and I know a lot of other people feel, I can't say the word on YouTube, but it rhymes with corny. Um, it makes you feel, you know, sexy. That's the word. Um, I have a couple books for that category. I also have a couple books in the category that made me confused and weirded out. Keep in mind, I am showing young adult and adult books. If you are underage, um, I recommend probably not reading the books that I recommend that are adult books because they do have adult topics. So keep that in mind. The, a lot of these books do have very adult topics that may make you uncomfortable or your parents may not want you to read. So yeah, I wanted to say that disclaimer as well. The only way I'm getting through this video right now is drinking this coffee. All right, let's get started with my books that made me feel either like happy or just like fluffy inside. Like I really enjoyed reading it. I'm also going to include manga because I do read manga and like regular books. So if you're not a manga reader, I definitely recommend looking into manga because there's some amazing stories. Uh, there's only one manga that I am recommending in this, and this is Say I Love You by Kane Hazuki. I don't know if that's how you say it. This is such a cute contemporary romance manga series. I only have the first two volumes, but I'm sure you could find it online too if you don't want to read it physically. I'm just going to read the back of the book because this is one of the first animes I ever watched when I got into anime as a kid and it's literally just so cute, so. It says, a stinging betrayal turned high schooler May Tachibana into a lifelong loner, but everything changes when she meets Yamato, a playboy who's intrigued by this mysterious violent recluse. We'll have to work hard to earn May's trust, but how long can May keep her heart closed off and how long will she refuse to say I love you? So he's just like a really cute like playboy who's just like really intrigued with this main character and he like tries to romance her and stuff. It's just really fluffy and cute and it makes me smile like when I watch the anime and reading it made me feel the exact same way. Oh my god, he's so cute. Like I love them. I love them. Next I have a graphic novel. So this is the first volume in the Heartstopper series. I believe there are four or five volumes that are out physically right now. And then you can also, I believe, read them on Alice Osman's website, who is the author of this series. This is a gay romance. It is incredibly beautiful and heartwarming. And I felt myself smiling the entire time I was reading it. The back says, boy meets boy, boys become friends, boys fall in love. And it's all about high school boys um, coming to terms with their sexuality. One is gay, one is bisexual, and it's just a really cute story. There's a bunch of cute characters, so much representation in this, and I just love it. Like, Charlie, I will protect him at all costs. Next, we have Easy by Tamara Weber. So I read this a couple of years ago, so there are some things that I do not remember, 
but I remember just absolutely loving this book. It is a romance, as you can see. Um, it is about a girl who, there are some strong like trigger warnings in it. She was sexually abused by someone who she went to school with and he never ended up going to jail. He just got like probation or something like that. And it's about this boy that comes into her life that tries to help her overcome her fears with sexual abuse. Um, and being sexually assaulted and it's just very beautiful and she takes down her abuser and it's just like women empowerment in this book it's beautiful i really want to reread it because it's been a while but i really loved it there's also a second book i don't remember much about the second book honestly but the second one i think was good too then i have a digital book which i will put on the screen it is all roads lead here by mariana Zapata. this is also a romance book um i do read a lot of romance but this one kind of hit different because it focuses a lot on grief because the main character i think she lost her mom it's been a while since i've read it but she lost her mom and she basically just moved her whole life to a new state and she rents out this garage from a kid. The kid's dad did not know that he rented out this garage space so she was stuck in a new state possibly being kicked out from somewhere that she was renting and the owner of the garage. He is amazing and there's like a romance with the main character and him and he's like grumpy at first and then he slowly just comes to terms with everything and it's a beautiful story it talks a lot about grief i really like the main character i really like the character development in the book and i just found the romance to be very beautiful very slow burn it happened so slow you could just see their romance grow and i just really liked it so i really like that romance book and i put that under the happy category instead of the spicy category because it doesn't focus so much on the spice and more on just emotions. So that's why I put that in this category, but there is spice in it. And then lastly, I have a book series right here. So I wanted to try to include some paranormal romance books in this video because as many of you guys know, paranormal romance is my all time favorite genre. That's what pretty much ha like these two bookshelves are up there are just paranormal romance. So it's hard to group those into emotions because I kind of feel the same with all of them. But I vividly remember this series making me laugh and making me feel a bunch of different things. But happiness is one of the things that I definitely remember from this book series. And as you can see from the colors and just the book covers like as you can see they're very just light and happy and I thought the story was very cute. So I absolutely love the trope of like popular with nerd or popular with goth. I don't know why I love it. I've just always loved the trope. I know a lot of people hate it but this is called The Ghost and the Goth by Stacey Cade and this is about a popular girl who once was alive and very popular in high school and then she gets hit by a bus full of band nerds. What she says band nerds. She dies and she's basically in the afterlife flickering in and out of existence and the only person that can see her is this goth boy in high school right here. They did not like each other when they were in high school and he is now the only one that can help her um, move to the other side and it's it's a romance but it's really cute and I really like their like bickering their personalities are so cute and it's just really fun it's a fun time I really enjoyed I believe every single book in the series I really want to reread it myself so I really recommend this if you just like really fun cutesy high school stuff this is young adult I believe okay so that was my like happy fluffy recommendation so now let's go to the sad so I read a lot of sad books I like when books make me feel emotions like sad or anger I prefer to read books that make me feel something I had to choose a couple of that made me sad but there are a lot of options out there <laughs> first one I'm always going to recommend is The Institute by Stephen King and I know when people hear Stephen King they get very intimidated because his old writing is very intimidating and it is very hard to read but his new writing is a lot easier for beginners to read. Anyone who ever asks me what Stephen King book I recommend starting with I always say this one because his new writing is just so easy to read and I am absolutely in love with this book. I have recommended almost every person in my family to read it and every single person who has read it in my family and my boyfriend have all loved it and said it was so good and made them cry. I'm actually about to reread this book and annotate the whole thing and I'm so excited to reread it because the first time I read it was in 2019. So to give you guys kind of like a little overview on what this is about, this book is about a boy named Luke who one night he is laying in bed and these intruders basically break into his house and murder his parents 
and he's literally like a little boy. They murder his parents and they take him away. And this little boy wakes up in this place called the Institute. And in the Institute, there are a bunch of kids who have these different types of like superpowers. They're not really superpowers, but they have all these abilities where they can do all of these different things. And they're all trapped in this Institute with like no windows, no doors. They cannot get out. They are kidnapped and they are trapped in this Institute. And then there is also another main character. This book flips back and forth to different point of views, but there's this other main character who is like a cop. He's like a, a night guard cop and he kind of goes undercover to figure out what's happening in this institute and that's all i'm really going to say about it this book is sad especially at the end it does have child abuse keep that in mind sexual abuse all of that stuff it's really dark and scary honestly but it is so good and it it made me cry it made my boyfriend cry um, anybody who has read it that I know said that they cried. I'm always going to recommend this. It made me sad, but it's so good and uh, probably my favorite book of all time. Ooh, okay, so this next book here is Then She Was Gone by Lisa Jewell. I love Lisa Jewell's writing. She writes like adult thriller horror books and this is an adult book. The last book I showed you was also an adult book. I read this as like a Patreon buddy read. I believe I rated this four or five stars. I haven't forgot about this book since I read it and I forget a lot of books that I read. This is about a little girl named Ellie who disappears and this book kind of goes back and forth in present time with Ellie's mother and also back in time when Ellie disappeared. So this is about Ellie's mother who is trying to grieve the loss of her daughter and this is like 10 years after. Main character who is Ellie's mom meets this man and this man has a daughter that looks and acts just like her missing daughter that was never found. And it's just a big thriller. It's really, really sad. I'm not gonna say any more to it because there's a lot of twists and turns in this book that I honestly did not expect. And I'm pretty good at guessing the endings of books. This one, this one's sad. And what happens to the characters is really sad. There is sexual assault in this book. There's a lot of trigger warnings for like suicide and everything. So keep that in mind when you want to read these books is that a lot of these have really intense trigger warnings. This book definitely made me feel something. This book made me feel disgusted. It made me feel sad, scared. And there's a, this book made me feel a lot of things. Next book that made me feel sad is Sadie by Courtney Summers. This was another Patreon buddy read book that I did. And I think I rated this four or five stars. This is, I think, a young adult book. Don't quote me on that. Um, it is about a girl named Sadie who runs away from home after her little sister gets murdered. And this book is kind of set up like a podcast radio show because the radio show is basically telling the story of Sadie. And Sadie, after her sister gets murdered, she's basically going around trying to solve her sister's murder. And that's all I'm really gonna say about it. This book left me pretty much speechless at the end because I'm not gonna lie to you guys, there is no resolved ending at the end of this book. It's one of those books that make you choose the ending. And if you don't like that, then you probably won't like this book. This book makes you think and it's sad. The things that happen in this book are incredibly sad. So that's all I'm gonna say about this one. I really do recommend it though. And then the rest of these books that made me feel sad are manga. So if you don't like manga, you can skip this part if you'd like. So the first manga series that made me feel sad and broken inside is Your Name by Makoto Shinkai, I think. So I believe there's only three books in the manga. They also have like a written story. If you don't like to read manga, you can like actually read the book. And then they also have a movie. I love the movie. I actually watched the movie before I read it and it made me cry. It's so incredibly beautiful. So I'm just gonna read the back of the book. It says, a story of two people determined to hold on to one another. Mitsuya, a high school girl from the deep, a town deep in the mountains, dreams of an unfamiliar life in Tokyo. Taki, a high school boy from Tokyo, dreams that he is a girl living in the mountains. As the two begin swapping lives, a miraculous story is set in motion. So basically this boy and girl who live in two different locations can switch bodies. This is kind of like a sci-fi fantasy book. It has those aspects to it and it's just beautiful, but it's also like hurts. It like, it makes you sad, but it also is like a beautiful story. It's just beautiful. If you don't want to read it, I recommend watching the movie. Then we have I Want to Eat Your Pancreas by Yuru Sumino. This one was kind of hard to read, but if you have a hard time reading manga, I recommend watching 
the movie because the movie shows the emotion a lot more than the manga does, but this is still a very beautiful story. This is about an introverted boy who finds their classmate's diary and that girl. The diary is of a girl named Sakura who is dying of pancreatic disease. And it's just a story about the girl dying of pancreatic disease and this introverted boy forming a friendship and kind of a romance with each other. And then the tragic end. That's all I'm gonna say. It's really sad. And then lastly, you guys know I'm going to recommend this because I always recommend this for people who ask me what is the easiest manga to start reading. I always recommend this series, but this series is also very sad and it has very high trigger warnings of suicide and self-harm and all of that stuff, so keep that in mind. This is Orange by Ichigo Takano. This is an epic love story. That's a, literally an epic love story. And I'm just gonna read the back of it for you. This is Naho immediately feels a connection to the new boy who has transferred to her class. Takaru is a calm kind and seems to like Naho as well, but the relationship gets thrown into a loop when Naho receives a letter from the future. So this is kind of like a, another sci-fi book. The letter explains that Kakuru will die unless Naho does exactly as the letter says. But changing fate is no easy task. When the letter starts to get things wrong, Naho worries she will still lose Kakuru forever. Luckily, Naho has her friends to back her up. Not only do they want to see Naho and Kakuru get together, they also have time traveling letters of their own. So like the main character gets these letters from herself in the future and the letter is basically saying you need to do these things or your friend that you're in love with is going to kill himself. It's really intense and it's it makes me feel like panicky reading it. That was a lot of talking. I told you guys this is gonna be long. All right, that was a little heavy. So let's move on to some books that may make you feel a little spicy. These are books that made me feel spicy. <laughs> I wish YouTube would let me say the word, but corny, spicy. These are the books that made me feel this way. So these are like romance books that have a lot of spice in them. First, I don't have the book, but the Off Campus series by L. Kennedy. I only liked the first book, but this is a like college-based romance. The main guy character is a hockey player and the other girl is like in drama or something like that. It's just a spicy romance with a hockey player. That's it. There's not much plot to the story, honestly, but it makes you feel things. At least it made me feel things, so I do like that first book. Then we have the Spanish Love Deception. This book I almost put in the happy fluffy category, but since it does have some spice in it, I decided to add it to this category. This one is highly, highly talked about on Book Talk, on Bookstagram, YouTube. This book is very popular, and I think it is worth the hype in my opinion. I do think the two main characters are super cute. Um, it's a happy fluffy romance with some spice, so Aaron Blackford. Love him. Next we have From Lukoff with Love from Mariana Zapata. Once again, Mariana Zapata has me in a chokehold. I love her romance books. I love her slow burn romance books. And this book is extremely slow burn. It is a hate to love romance with two ice skaters. I love sports romance. Like, I don't know what it is about with sports romance. That really just has me. It's very good. And it has some spice. Once it gets to that point, so good, but it's very slow burn, just to let you know. <laughs> then we have The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren. I'm editing this video and I realized I said the synopsis of this book completely wrong. So this book is about uh, two main characters who are at a wedding and the entire, everyone at the entire wedding get food sickness from the food area that's there. And the only two people who did not eat the food at the wedding did not get sick, obviously. So the bride of the wedding was like, I need someone to go on my honeymoon for me. So these two people that hate each other go on the honeymoon together. So it's a guy and a girl. They both hate each other because of past experiences. They go on a honeymoon together. It's so good and it's so spicy. And then, of course, we have the iconic Punk 57 by Penelope Douglas. This one is the all-time spice, but this one also is all-time toxicity. I did not purposely give this five stars because of some of the questionable topics in this book. This, the relationship between these characters are very, very toxic and they should not be together. It's hot and the book is spicy. So I have no shame in saying that I really, really enjoyed this book. I'm going to be rereading it soon and annotating it 
because the first time I read it, I read it on my Kindle. <laughs> it's just really good. I'm not going to go too in depth about all of these types of books because they're all just romance, but this one has a really good story to it. All right, and now we have the last category of books that made me feel confused or weirded me out a little bit. So it takes a lot for me to be like, okay, like weird. <laughs> and these books did. First book is actually the last book that I read a couple days ago, and it is Bunny by Mona Awad. This book, um, you know, I watched books with Chloe and Caitlin and all them, and they love this book and they always recommend it to people. And I really never really knew what it was about. Um, it's kind of like a psychological thriller, I guess. I don't really know the, the genre of it but I think it was just a little too weird for me. It is about this main character who goes to school with this group of girls who call themselves the bunnies, but it kind of seems like the bunnies are in this cult type of group and they try to like turn the main character and bring her into this cult and then they like sacrifice bunnies and there's so much that happens in this book, but there's also not that much that happens in this book. The writing is really great, but it's also really confusing. And I rated this book two stars, but there's also some people that absolutely love this book. So I feel like you've just got a vibe with it to enjoy it. So that's why I'm including it because some people really like weird and people really like analyzing books. And I've seen a lot of book reviews on this book that really deep dive into it. And I can see why people really like it. But for me, it was a little too much. It was a little too weird. I did like the vibes of it though. Like I really liked the cover of the book. I really like the vibes of it, like pink bunnies and like cupcakes and all of that stuff. Like I really liked it, but it was just too weird. <laughs> so I'm gonna include that. Oh, I forgot I still had a whole nother category. This is not the last category. Sorry, I don't know if I said it was or not, but then we have My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix. I personally did not like this book that much, but I know a lot, my eye is twitching. A lot of people really like this book. The reason I kept it is because the cover is stunning. Obviously, I'm gonna keep a book that looks like a VHS tape. Absolutely beautiful. But this is giving like 80s horror vibes when you read it. It's literally just about a girl who gets possessed and then they do an exorcism on her. A lot of people really enjoy this. I personally didn't like it. Felt like it was confusing and boring and a little weird and I just didn't vibe with it, but a lot of people do like it. So that's why I'm recommending it to you guys. There were some scenes that I really liked. I mean, obviously I annotated a lot, but there are just things that were sus about this book. Like they had a week in school where they like dressed up in different categories like you do in high school, like a character week. And one of the days was literally slave day. Like, are you fucking joking? That's so weird. Like there's just things that I was like, ew, like I don't like this. So that's why I'm including that in this category. I've been talking so much that my battery died, but we have a new one, so we're good. The last book in this category is The Family Upstairs by Lisa Jewell. Like I said, I love Lisa Jewell. I love her writing. And this is an adult thriller. So this is about a main character who, when she turns 18, I think, oh no, 25. When she turns 25, she gets a letter in the mail saying that she is the sole inheritor of the abandoned mansion on in this like road. So basically she owns this abandoned mansion because she is a part of this family she's never met before. And there was a rule on the house that when she turns 25, she finally gets the house. So it's abandoned. She goes and sees the abandoned mansion and there's a lot of things that happen inside the house. I was expecting this to be a story that was more of like a horror, like a scary haunted house vibes, but it's actually not about the house at all. It's about the people who used to live in the house. I'm just gonna read this little part. It says, nearly 25 years ago, the police were called to 16 Cheyenne Walk with reports of a baby crying. When they arrived, they found a healthy 10 month old safe and sound in the upstairs bedroom. In the kitchen, three dead bodies, all dressed in black, were seemingly posed next to a hastily scrawled note. The four other children reported to live at Cheyenne Walk were gone. So that's all I'm really gonna say about it. It has very, it has a lot of, once again, sexual assault, cult. Oh, it's literally so, there, it made me feel weird because it was so cult-like. There was cults in it. It was creepy made me feel weird while I was reading it, but I loved it. And the second book is actually coming out this year because it left on like a cliffhanger. 
The second book is coming out this year and I'm so excited to read the second book. So I really recommend this. It's really weird, interesting. It's a story I've never really read before. So I really liked it. All right, and now we're on to the last category, which are books that made me feel angry or scared whether it be a book that actually scared me like horror wise or whether it was characters that made me feel angry. <laughs> so let's just start start with a book that had characters that made me angry. After by Anna Todd. <laughs> so some of you guys may be a little shook because I, since I was like 13 years old, have been an after fanatic. And since growing up and realizing that this book is really not that good, the movies are not good, the writing is not good, and the characters suck. I've grown to realize that this book is not that great. Do I still love the series? Yes. Will I always still love the series? Yes, because I grew up reading it on Wattpad. I'm always going to love it. I have the book signed by the literal actors and actresses in the movie and the author. I have three copies of this book. So obviously I was a pretty dedicated fan. But anybody who has read this series of like four, five books or watched the movies know that these characters are so anger inducing. They are so annoying. They are so toxic for each other. Harden is the most annoying man I've ever read in my life. Tessa is the most annoying girl I've ever read in my life. She's the worst main character on earth. I don't know why I enjoyed this growing up, but I cannot even read the books anymore because the characters are all so annoying. Next, we have a manga. This is Tomi by Junji Ito. Honestly, if you wanna feel a little weirded out, any book by Junji Ito may make you feel that way. He is a horror manga Japanese writer and he just makes weird stuff. I have a lot of his books. This is about a girl named Tomi who basically keeps getting murdered or sexually harassed by men. So she comes back and she murders a bunch of men. It's queen stuff, honestly. I love Tomi. And the art is something you have to get used to. It's very like old school, but I'm going to kind of show you something that may be a little creepy for some of you guys. So if you wanna skip, you can go ahead and skip like 10 seconds. But there is very creepy, it's a creepy art style that some people may not vibe with and it may creep you out a little bit, but I love Junji Ito. <laughs> this next book was quite possibly, now that I think about it, probably my favorite book of last year and I wanted to include it. And I don't really know if this book fits into this category, but this is the only category I could put this book in because I wanted to show it and recommend it. So this is A Dowry of Blood by S.T. Gibson. This was my favorite book of last year. I think I rated it four stars after I read it and then I kept thinking about the book so much that I went back and I rated it five stars and I would really like to reread it. This is a Dracula retelling and it is written, it is written in the point of view of the diary of Dracula's wife. There is a polyamorous relationship in this book a lot of like bisexual representation. So Polly, which is like three, and then there's also like a fourth person that joins the relationship with like Dracula, his wife, and then they have another wife, and then they have another husband. It's just like a big group. It was really interesting to read a book like this with Dracula that includes so many like wives and husbands and how much they all love each other. It was like really nice to read and I wasn't expecting to enjoy it as much as I did. It is written so beautifully. Like I love this author. I love the way that they write. They write so lyrically. It is beautiful. Like I wish I could read one of the quotes that I annotated without spoiling too much. Okay, I feel like this quote won't spoil much, but it is kind of spicy. So basically it is about like the poly relationship and they're kind of being a little spicy in bed but it says you held him by the throat watching waves of rapture cross his face while Magdalena and I drank from him. He looked like a lithe, how to say half these words. He looked like a lithe young Christ crucified between two beautiful women with you as his cross. Like literally just like little quotes like that. I'm like, wow, this is beautiful. My favorite quote is love makes monsters of us, Costanta, and not everyone is cut out for monstrosity. Like, I just love the way this book is written. And the reason I put it in this category is because Dracula pisses me off. He is a piece of crap. He doesn't let his significant others do literally anything. He's so possessive, he's disgusting. 
and that's why I put that in this category because Dracula was pissing me off the entire time and I'm glad that he died and that's not a spoiler because it literally says it on the first page. It's literally like the whole story of the wife and how she ended up murdering him. So it's really good. And the last book that I am showing is The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix. So I already showed another Grady Hendrix book and I did not like that one. So I was not expecting to like this one, but I rated this four stars. I really enjoyed this book, but it made me feel a little weird. It's a horror book with vampires. It is about a Southern book club with a bunch of old white ladies and they get together every single week and they talk about books. And suddenly one week there is a new guy that joins the neighborhood. He's very sus and he wants to join the book club and things just start happening from there. And a bunch of old white ladies that are in a Southern book club just become boss babes, honestly. And they have to slay a vampire. It is pretty funny. It's also really gross in some parts. And the reason I added it to this category is because there is a lot of misogynistic comments in this book that really, really pissed me off. There's a lot of gaslighting. Obviously this is based in the South. And as many of you guys know, I live in the South myself. I live in Georgia. And a lot of men here are very misogynistic towards their wives and they tell their wives what they can and can't do. They talk down to them. They tell them they'd go wash the dishes, like all of those types of jokes is what the men do here. And it happens so much in this book that I was tired of it. There is also a lot of, like there's some racist remarks in these books. And My Best Friend's Exorcism also had racism in it. So I don't really understand why this author keeps adding racism for literally no reason. Maybe because it was written in the South and there's unfortunately a lot of racism here in the South. I don't really know but that's what angered me and that's why I'm putting this in the cat in this category. While I really did enjoy the story in this book, I felt like there were some themes that really weren't necessary for the story. The gaslighting from the husbands in this book, I could not, like I had to put the book down at some parts because I was physically like shaking. I was so angry by what these men were saying in the book. It made me so mad. <laughs> All right, I don't know how long this video is going to be, but I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope you got some good book recommendations from me. I tried to add stuff in here that weren't highly already hyped up online, but a lot of these books have already kind of been talked about by other people. But these are books that I thought fit the themes very well. If you would like me to do any other videos like this in the future, definitely let me know, like book recommendation videos. I love recommending books to you guys. and I love talking about books, so I have no issue doing more videos like this. Make sure to check out my Patreon down below. I do have a buddy read every single month on Patreon. For the month of March, we are reading My Dark Vanessa, which has very dark themes as well. And we discuss it in the Discord together and it's a really great time. So if you wanna join like a little book club, I do have that down below on Patreon. And I also have all of my social medias down below as well if you'd like to keep up to date with all of that stuff. Thank you guys so, so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.